Hello, my name is Nancy Allen, and I'm going to be your instructor in this set of lessons, Beginning Writing for Publication, the online version. The objectives of this set of, of lessons is, first of all, to discuss how to design and conduct research that's likely to be published. Mostly we're going to be talking about academic journals, but we're going to be talking about other venues as well. What we want to do is to help you get things published. We want to identify appropriate venues for the research that you're doing. We want to talk about some major pitfalls that cause papers to be rejected so we can strengthen your chances of being accepted as an academic uh, author. And we want to finally uh, describe what steps should be taken if a, a journal is, uh, if a paper is rejected return from a journal if it is not accepted the first time. So essentially, the overall goal of this set of lessons is to help you get published research. The sessions, uh, we're going to talk about developing a writing program in the first lesson, and then for two lessons we're going to talk about methods. Um, now, hopefully this will be helpful regardless of the stage you are in in the writing process. Uh, there will be, um, an we'll talk about writing the introduction and the literature review for your, your publications with special attention to the liter review of the literature because that's a very important part of getting published. Uh, we're going to talk about how to write findings, the discussion area, and the abstract. Uh, talk about issues of style and plagiarism. The last, or seventh lesson, uh, the intention is for you to submit something to me and let me give you feedback. Feedback is always helpful um, and uh, all of us as professionals can gain from feedback from our peers. This is a statement that kind of sums up where most of us are. I don't like to write but I love to have written. We all know we need to publish. We all love it when something gets published but the process can be hard, demanding, frightening, uh, but it is very important that we all get to that part that we have written. Why do we have to publish? Well, first of all, it validates your work. You know what, that you know a lot about uh, the field that you're in. You, you value the kind of work that you do, but it is in publishing that that work is validated. Uh, for example, my field is, uh, one of my fields is science, and uh, when you study the history of science, you understand how important Newton was to science. However, he almost wasn't, uh, he almost wasn't noticed at all, because although he had done wonderful work in the area of physics, he hadn't published. A friend found his work, encouraged him really pushed him to publish his work. And of course we know that it, it uh, revolutionized the study of physics and all of the disciplines that depend on the, uh, the study of physics. So just doing good work is important, but publishing so that uh, that work is validated is very, a very, very important, important part of the process. As academics, we uh, understand how important that is, but it's becoming that important in every field. That to validate your work, you must share it with the colleagues in your field, and that means publishing. Another reason is that what you know, when it is shared, it becomes part of the knowledge base, so that your whole field moves forward. You are supporting what is known in your field by publishing your work. It establishes you as a scholar. Um, now, it is not necessarily the person who does the best work that gets recognized in the field. It is the one who publishes. The university uh, encourages all of us to, pu to publish. Uh, it's, it's very important in academia, not only um, to to undergo a promotion and, and, if possible, tenure, but also sometimes just to keep your job. It's very important for your institution to show that the 
uh, individuals within the, the different colleges are important in their field. That means they publish. So where are you now in the process? Maybe you have a paper you're working on. You just need to get it spiffed up and get it ready for publication and to, to go ahead and send it in. I hope that we will be very helpful to you in that process. Maybe you haven't started a paper. Maybe you have some data. You think it's important data, but you don't quite know what to do with it. Again, hopefully this course will uh, show you where to go with that data so that it becomes in publishable form. Maybe you're not that far yet, but you have some ideas for research. You have some ideas on where to get the data. Maybe we can get you started and get you moving in the right direction. Maybe you're a new researcher and you're totally clueless. You don't even know how to begin. Well, hopefully, we can start you off on a research agenda. And uh, it's just like the old uh, adage says, a journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. So wherever you are in that process, we want to help you keep moving forward with the ultimate goal of being a published author in your field, a recognized scholar in your field. So what we're going to do in this set of lessons, each, uh, each lesson will have uh, probably three videos uh, like this one, followed by some reading or, and, or some other resources that I'm going to ask you to look at, and then some questions. So uh, uh, in each lesson, you will look at a short video, access the resources I give you, and then take the little quiz before going to the next lesson. So this lesson, uh, this little video, is about the first steps in establishing a research process. First of all, you've got to establish research as a priority. Um, this, I think, is where we fall down most. We say, oh, I know I need to do research, but what am I going to do it? What am I going to do it? Well, you show up for your classes, I'm sure. You know your classes meet Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at, at 9 o'clock, and you're there, and you have the lesson done, and you present it. Why? Because you recognize that as a responsibility, you schedule for it, and you build your, your week, your, your semester around, you don't even ask if you're going to fulfill that responsibility. You know you are, because that's your responsibility. You have to do the same thing for your research. You can't just try to fit it around the corners or it will not happen. So you must say that research is a priority. It's not an extra. It's something that must get done. It's a responsibility. And you must plan for it. And that planning we're going to call establishing a solid research structure. One huge barrier to success is simply time. None of us have time. We're all busy people. But if you do not set a time to do your research and writing, it will not get done. So find a time, set it, make it important to you, and stick with it. No, I'm sorry. I can't meet with you during that time. That is my research time. That is my writing time. No, I'm sorry. I can't sleep late this morning, no matter how late I stayed up last night. Because at 6 o'clock in the morning is my research time, is my writing time. And that's set, and I'm responsible for it. You've got to have that kind of uh, commitment and that kind of uh, um, responsibility to get this done. It doesn't just happen. A lot of us, particularly if you're a new researcher, you're insecure. Um, you don't know how to write. You're afraid your work isn't going to be good enough. And so it's really hard. You're shy about putting your papers out there. Well, think about what will you lose and what will you gain? The worst thing that can happen is that they can uh, say that they don't want your paper but give you some excellent feedback, which will make you a better scholar and more likely to be published next time. That's the worst. And the best, of course, is that you start moving forward in your research agenda. So everybody, every scholar in the world has had a paper rejected. 
So don't be shy about it. Get in there. You've got good ideas. You've got uh, um, research waiting to be published. And so just get in there and do it. We may lack knowledge. We don't know where to publish. We don't know how to write it up so that it's published. So we're going to try to fix that. And I'm going to give you some extra resources so that you can go and get additional information. And don't be afraid to ask your peers. When you don't know, ask. Uh, you have my email address. It's it's in the, uh, um, yeah, the course. And I don't know everything but I can sure point you in the right direction. So if nobody else is helping you, write me and let me give you some advice to, so you can keep moving on your academic career. Okay, so now we're going to start talking about getting that research published. This is my number one tip. Always remember that you are writing for publication, not for yourself. If you want to take notes, you want to keep a diary, you want to keep a journal, you want to make a blog, fine, go for it. But when you're writing academic papers, you're writing for the, the, uh, the public. You're, first of all, you're writing for the publisher and the editors, and after that, for the, the audience that you're addressing. So sometimes this may not be the way you would want to write, but what we want to focus on is it's not about you. It's about getting your work published. Okay, so when, my second big tip, for particularly if you are uh, a, a young researcher, and by young I, mean, I don't mean age-wise, I mean you're beginning your research agenda. This is something I wasn't very good at, uh, and, and I hope you are all better, is to identify your focus. It is far more important that you have a number of papers around the same topic than if you have a number of papers around lots of different topics. So you need to think about what is my field? What am I passionate about? What do I want people to recognize me as an expert in? And then that's what you want to do. That's where you want to do your research and that's where you want to do your publication. It really doesn't do your academic uh, career much good to publish lots of papers that do not focus in a single area. Or, now, what do I mean a single area? How broad do you want it? How narrow do you want it? Um, that's up to you. You're going to have to make some judgments there. For example, um, my field is education. All my papers are in education. But what kind of education? I do a lot of in educational technology and in science education. And now I'm doing a lot in reading education. But it would be better if I focused on, say, reading. So reading in science, scientific reading, uh, teaching reading, uh, technology related to reading. In other words, although I may have interest in all those other fields, you can see a clear focus that threads through my work. Now, over time, your focus may shift and you may go in another area. But always remember that the more publication you have in a, in a particular area, the more recognized you will be as a scholar in that field. Okay, this is the introductory lesson. We're going to stop now and let you uh, look at the resources. Now, I'm listing those resources as optional resources and required resources. I suggest that you look at all of them. If it's a required resource, I want you to read it thoroughly. If it's an optional resource, I think it's helpful to you. And you'll want to look over it and see how helpful. And because of where you are and what you need to know and what you need to do, uh, will depend on how deeply you delve into those optional resources. But access the resources, at least look at all of them, and then answer the questions for part one of this lesson before you go on to part two. Thank you.